Good morning, everyone. I'm Quinn Wisson from Vertical Measures, and I'm here hosting VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled, Prepare for Panda 2013, How to Destroy All Your Duplicate Content, and will be presented by our very own Director of SEO Services here at Vertical Measures, Art Enke. Art manages the internet marketing strategist team here at VM, helping clients implement successful SEO strategies and grow their traffic. He previously worked in the domain industry as an internal SEO and a business developer for Name.com, where he was responsible for implementing new scalable product offerings, including SEO tutors. Most recently, Art was the SEO manager for FNW Media, helping clients increase their organic traffic. And we're excited to have him here hosting the webinar today. Before we get started and I hand over the presentation to Art, I just have a few things to note. Today's webinar will be available for review by the latest Monday afternoon, if not sooner, barring any technical difficulties. We'll also be happy to answer any of your questions. So if you do have any, take a peek at your webinar interface and you'll see a little question applet where you can send anything you'd like me to ask Art at the end of his presentation. Also, you can ask us questions via Twitter using the hashtag VMWebinar. Any questions we don't get to, we'll be sure to try and answer via email. If you're having any technical difficulties, please just attempt to reconnect. So that's all my notes, and I will go ahead and hand it off to our special presenter, Art Enke. Hey, everybody. I hope everybody is doing great today uh, on the eve of the second Panda update of 2013. Matt Cutts said that is coming out tomorrow or Monday. So hold on to your seat. Hopefully the, the Panda update doesn't uh, make everything irrelevant that I'm going to talk, to you about, uh, talk with you about today, but I don't think it will. I'm excited to be here today. I've been, I've been uh, in the industry about eight years. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick background of, about where I've been in this the past two or three years, I've been involved with a number of in-depth site analysis projects, looking at large sites, small sites, and uh, and I've and I've seen just about every way there is to get rid of duplicate content. Duplicate content, of course, is a big, big problem for Panda, and we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you some really specific uh, ways to get rid of your duplicate content, and I hope nobody's disappointed because. Uh, I'm not going to talk about robots and lasers today, even though this image that you're seeing on the screen shows some of that. However, I'm going to get started by, by uh, talking a little bit about the Starship Enterprise. So lately, I've been catching up on a few episodes of, of, of Netflix, and, and, and it's, it's interesting to me when, when I was thinking, when I was watching these, uh, these episodes, a panic kept popping in my mind. I was thinking, I wonder if the, 20, the, the first uh, Enterprise well, somewhat like Panda, it was it was definitely groundbreaking. Uh, the original Enterprise could destroy the inhabitants of an entire planet. I don't know if you knew that. The 2011 model of Panda might be kind of like the Starship Enterprise, and I'll tell you where I'm going with this. So, 2012, there was a different version of Panda. Uh, nothing too crazy. Everything was pretty much the same. A few, a few new uh, design tweaks. Nothing really earth-shattering. However, in 2013, we don't know how big Panda could be. It could be a really, really big deal. So it's important that you pay attention today and destroy all your duplicate content. Uh, okay. So there have been 24 updates. Tomorrow or Monday is going to be the 25th update. I hope everybody's ready for that. Um, I want to talk about Panda real quick. And I, I'm assuming everybody in this group today knows a lot about Panda. If you don't, it's important to go over a couple things. So. Panda is a machine learning algorithm. It was scaled from human quality raters. So this guy named Navneet Panda at Google took a bunch of quality raters and they actually rated a bunch of different sites based, based on different criteria, what they liked about sites, what they didn't like, and they, met, they, they uh, collaborated on a whole bunch of data. And that was groundbreaking. And Google has been very, very happy with it. As we've talked about, there have been 24 updates. It's important to note that Panda is a site-wide penalty. Okay, and it targets duplicate content and thin and template content. So why is removing it so important? Panda is a site-wide penalty. Again, so what happens is Google, in fact, has said that even if you have a great site, great search metrics, you have great 
uh, social mentions, you've got great uh, link profile. Even if you have a great site such as that, you can still have a bunch of pages on your site that you may not know about that can take down the site. Here's a screenshot. This is from uh, eHow. This is from Search Metrics, this image. But even two years later, wow, Panda has really destroyed a lot of great sites, a lot of big sites. And uh, we're going to talk about how to protect yourself from that. So duplicate content can cause a number of issues. And I'm going to talk about a few of those issues to, issues to start off. Supplemental index results. I don't know if you've noticed this. Uh, most likely you have if you, if you have, have uh, been doing a lot of research or, or trying to figure out the troubleshooting your site recently. You see these truncated results at the bottom of Google often. Anytime you see the word omitted and results, you don't want to be part of that phrase. Google is basically saying, okay, you've got too much of the same thing. I'm tired of showing you this. They're not going to show anything else. It's not important. You don't want to be in the supplemental index results. Crawl limits can be imposed, and you can have a bloated index. Your site, this is a screenshot from Google Webmaster Tools. Uh, you, you, your site basically has a budget. Okay, We don't know what that number is, but there is a specific amount where you know, Google is going to crawl your site. Google bots are going to go through every page of your site. But if you keep throwing forward duplicate content, duplicate pages, you're filling. You're basically wasting the time of the, of the Google bot. You don't want to fill that up with with duplicate titles, duplicate duplicate content, because the really important stuff may not get displayed and truncated. I want to talk about a bloated index. So, so back in the day, it used to be cool, right? In 2008, I remember being. Uh, Excited when I would see a client site that had a ton of pages. It didn't matter if they were, you know, generated by some automatic search query, internal search results, or whatever. It was cool, right? Back in 2008, 2009, when you had a, a site. This, this is actually a, uh, a, a, a uh, the number of index pages from a site that has continually been uh, getting a very big bloated index over time. Over the last two years, this particular site I've been watching. Had, should be about 100,000 pages. Instead, now it's over 13 million index pages. It used to be cool, but not anymore. This this site, this particular uh, site, this is just a, a graph from compete.com of this this site. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, hey, well, this is because of Penguin. What could happen in April of last year? But this site is not. If you look at the uh, the number of pages that this site is spending, it's it's literally hundreds of of, of uh, pages per day, even per hour sometimes pages that are duplicate thin pages, and this is what's happening to the traffic on that site. So why doesn't Google like duplicate content? <clears throat> and I'm just going to go over this real quickly because we got some really important content to get to. So I think this is really important, and this is how I approach a site. Every time I do an in-depth analysis of a site, I've, I've worked on over 300 sites. Um, every time I look at a new site, I think of, of the picture on the left. Your site should absolutely look like this image on the left. And what I mean by that is, here you've got a group of people that have a, a, a very distinct set of distinguishing features. For example, if if you wanted to find a young lady with dark hair and white hat, you know, on the left, it's really easy to spot her. You don't even have to look very long. However, if you look on the right hand side, if you take a look at this this uh, group of people, this homogeneous group of men and women from the 40s or 50s, and let's say you wanted to find all the people that have a uh, all the all the men that have a, a hat, a tie, and a jacket on, well going to be much more difficult. <clears throat> Unfortunately, many people's websites look like the image on the right, inadvertently. And today I'm not talking about sites that are nefariously or, or purposely trying to grab content from other sites. That's really not the case. In most cases that I've, I've looked at sites, it's really people inadvertently allowing duplicate URLs to bloat the index. OK, so what does duplicate content look like? Replicated text, images, URLs, here's a few examples. Here is here's a, a, a site command search for a particular site. And as you can see, all you see is the same stuff. Everything is the same except for the URL, which is only slightly different. Not what you want your site to look like. Um, you have to be careful if you have a WordPress blog. With WordPress, the default settings on WordPress, typically on tag pages or category pages, can put your duplicate content, your content in two places at once. This is from our blog, and you'll see this, uh, this, this first two paragraphs of this particular post show up in the blog category page, but they all, this, these two paragraphs also show up on the actual post page. And oftentimes you'll see WordPress sites that have the entire post 
both on the tag pages, both on the category pages, and on the post pages. So in three different places, you're going to have this, this great text, well written, well thought of, but it, it unfortunately exists in more than one place, unless you set it to be otherwise. Um, I want to take a moment to talk about replicate images, or replicated images. Duplicate images, in case you're like an editor on a team, and say you're not an SEO person and you're going to be doing this as an editor and you're not necessarily wanting to get that involved, well, you still need to understand how duplicate content, duplicate content like images, can take down your site. Here, here's a screenshot. Here's actually an image that I caught on one of my editors using, and, and I want to tell you a quick story about this. This, this picture of the book with the check mark. I, at uh, the previous company I was with, as Quinn mentioned earlier, I was at a company called FMW Media, had a, a ton of great editors there, really talented writers. Well, this one editor for a very, very large site uh, was consistently ranking number three or number four for all of his posts. Every time he would write a post, he would be like number three or number four. And, and uh, I, I jumped in to solve that problem, and what I, what I found was that this particular editor was grabbing images from, like this particular image came from Wikipedia. He was already indexed by a page on Wikipedia. And I can't remember if the name of the image was uh, checkbox.gif. It was something similar to checkbox.gif. And it was like 330 pixels by 280. Anyway, I, I figured that was the problem, but I wanted to experiment. So I told the editor, hey, let's, instead of swapping that image out right away, why don't we take a look and, and let's just refine it a little bit. Let's change the extension. Let's put, put in your keyword, of course. And let's see what happens. So, so I had him do this, and what he what he did is resized it. it was, he made it a little bit smaller to make it quote unquote unique and uh, put his keyword in there. It's a great idea to put your keywords in, uh, in your uh, images. He put it in the alt text. And then before long, all of his posts started ranking number one. Okay, so that one little one little image was holding back his his posts from, from ranking. So duplicate images, not a good idea. So let me get to the meat of this discussion. Today, you know, <coughs> these I want to just make it clear that, that replicated pages are replicated URLs. Okay, let me repeat that. Replicated pages are replicated URLs. Anytime you have a different URL that's similar to another, it can spin off biblical content. And let me show, show you what I mean. Uh, titles and content, unfortunately, are, 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 are it's one of our most important tools, or basic tools. If you're doing on-page SEO, you have to have a unique meta title. It's important to have unique content, absolutely. But these URLs, unfortunately, can spin out of control. And you can have a site that looks like that, that group of people earlier that are, that are not distinguishable. You don't want your site to look like that. So how I destroy duplicate URLs is this. I, I follow these seven steps. And there's one more we're going to talk about a last resort after all that. You try all these things. The first thing you have to do, no matter what, uh, if you have a site that's of any uh, size or complexity, you have to start with the keyword map. Keyword mapping is, uh, here's my profound quote for the day. Every minute you spend keyword mapping saves a bunch of time and execution and helps you keep your sanity. So a keyword map is basically going through and, and figuring out what URLs that you really want to focus on. Okay, it's not realistic if you have a, if you have a site that's 100,000 pages. Uh, you're not necessarily going to be keyword mapping every page. Uh, on a very, very large site I was working on recently, I only uh, keyword mapped maybe 150 URLs, not even that. Uh, it depends on, on what your goals are. I always say start with the top 100 URLs if your site is large. If your site is small, you can pretty much map the whole thing. But this is what it should look like. You should have a column for URLs. You should, you should have a column for primary keywords, secondary keywords, your meta title, meta description. You, you can add a bunch of other columns in here, you know, the text. Your header tags, you know, your images you want to use. Uh, only thing is, I leave off meta keywords. I hope nobody even cares about meta keywords today because I just ignore them. Uh, here's what a real keyword map looks like. So, this example here, this is from a real example. I, I changed the URL uh, to protect the client's privacy. What uh, what you can see is primary keywords, secondary keywords. Great way to organize your efforts. And over time, as you're developing new content strategies, you can you can refer to this and be like, okay, uh, I know I want to target this particular keyword set on this particular page. It's important to keep a, a, at least a mental map and a written map of what what keywords you're targeting at all times before you create any content. Okay. So the next step is to start crawling. Crawling is is uh, very very easy, and I want to add this disclaimer real quick. Um, even though crawling doesn't hurt your site, I just want to say before we jump into the other stuff, proceed carefully. 
when attempting to de-index URLs or pages. Seriously, you don't want to de-index your entire site. Okay. So the crawl is very important. I like SEO Moz's tool. Uh, pro, the, the, the pro account tool for SEO Moz, when you set up a campaign, I, it's really simple. They have to generate these really nice reports. You can actually import your company's logo when you export a, a, a PDF uh, when you're presenting it to your clients. It's really, really helpful. What I like about this is that they make it easy to find the duplicate content. And you'll notice how I have these two buttons circled, duplicate page, con page content, duplicate page title. These numbers are almost the same, and you'll notice that. That's because, again, duplicate content equals duplicate uh, titles, which equal duplicate URLs. They're, they're all synonymous. In this tool, you can actually export a CSV file. And if you do that, you're going to see uh, a number of things. When you have the CSV sorted, you can go through and quickly find out what's going on here. Now, this isn't a client that's trying to game the system. They're not, try they're not stealing content anywhere. But take a look at all these duplicate meta titles on the right-hand side. This, this side, and these are, these are, this is just a function of the CMS. Uh, whatever platform they're using, they, you know, they got particular product swatches or de product detail pages, just, just uh, helping out the user. This is a very user-friendly quality site that does really well, but they've got a ton of uh, duplicate titles, as do many sites. So how do we get rid of this stuff? That's, that's what I really want to focus on is, is how do you get rid of this stuff? Once you've got it, what's the best way to proceed? So robots.txt is, is a great, uh, great uh, step to do if, if you've already, if you've got a site that's in the dev stage or if you've got a staging site where everything gets posted and then it goes to the live site, uh, the, the robots.txt file is a great way to do that. However, it's not very good. Once your site is indexed, if you've got, if you've got a site that's already, it's already been picked up by Google, it's already been crawled, and, and Google already sees your dev site, then it's, it's not a great tool to go after. You have to do some other things, which we'll talk about. But it's a really, really good, quick solution to, to uh, block entire folders. So meta robots is what I tend to go to next. If, I, if I'm looking at a site and I've got a bunch of duplicate content through my site crawl, I've seen there's a, a bunch of things in there that shouldn't be, uh, I like the meta robots tag because you have three easy choices. You can do meta no index follow, index no follow, no index or no follow. I pretty much always use no index follow because that's basically going to block the duplicate page, but it'll allow the, the Google bot to keep crawling the rest of the site. You don't want to just stop it in its tracks usually, and again, unless it's a dev site or a staging site or like a complete mirror image site. And notice on here, you're not going to see index follow. By default, Google bots are going to crawl your site no matter what, unless you tell them not to. Okay? The image below is, is an actual image from, from a site with it, what it looks like in the code. Okay, canonicals, super, super important, not only for e-commerce sites, but also for content sites. I, I, I want to just pay special attention to this because I see a lot of sites that have proper canonicalization. They're already in place, but yet there are still a ton of duplicate uh, URLs. Um, I want to take a look at this site here for an example. This is sportsauthority.com. If you take a look at the uh, footer of the site, this is on page five of, of a particular product page on men's running shoes. And you'll notice below I've got a, a URL written out here. This isn't actually the URL of this page. This is what it should be, sportsauthority.com slash men slash running shoes. But uh, for your homework today, I'd like you to go take a look at that site and just, uh, and just uh, look for opportunities where they could improve. You'll be, uh, you'll be amused by some of the opportunities that you see on that site. But, but anyway, if you look at this site, let's see if they've got canonicals uh, properly implemented. Well, unfortunately, no. This, as you can see, they've got 35 pages indexed with the exact same meta title, exact same meta description, almost the same URL. And I, I don't mean to pick on this site. We, you're going to see all kinds of sites uh, uh, that, that uh, have the same issues. Okay. So we covered some really important ground in just a few minutes. Robot.txt, robots.txt, meta robots, uh, rel canonical. Another perfectly legitimate way to get rid of duplicate content is through 404 removal. And, and this is basically when you're taking down a page, you just take down the page, and then it's going to return a 404. You want to make sure that this is not returning a, 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 
you want to make sure it's returning a true 404, not a fake or a soft 404. I've seen pages where clients have set up a page where they thought was the 404, but it wasn't. It was actually just creating multiple replicate URLs, and that's not at all what you want to do. You want to have it return a true 404 error, and then over time, Google is just going to return, it's just going to remove this from their index. I wouldn't do this on a mass scale. <clears throat> I mean, if, if, if you don't want to do a 404 on like three quarters of your site or anything crazy like that, but it's, it's a legitimate way to get down, take down a particular category. Let's say you had a category that you no longer sell and it's completely unrelated to all the other products on your site or all the other content on your site, not even related. It's a good, uh, it's a good way to proceed. Okay, so a 3 one redirect is what you want to do if the duplicate page has a canonical tag in place and the page has existing backlinks and traffic. In other words, if people are regularly visiting a particular page, but you know you just want to you've, you've developed a better looking page, has better content, it's going to have more user engagement, you want to uh, use a 301 redirect. That way you're not just killing the traffic and you're not getting rid of all those valuable links that you might have at the site. Again, Panda in 2013 uh, scares me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Panda is, is, is all about user engagement. We don't know how, how high that can ratchet up in the future. I'm, I'm really curious, as you are, to see what they're going to say tomorrow or Monday. But I, I anticipate, uh, just like we looked at the three different uh, images of the Starship Enterprise, the third image, the, 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 uh, Starship, the Galaxy class Starship Enterprise, was completely different than the first two models. I'm a little afraid of, of Panda, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm really excited about content, and uh, as a last resort, I wanted to just show this one to you. If all of these above things don't work for you, if you've already ran through uh, robots.txt, meta robots, rel canonical, 404 removal, 301 redirects, you can go into Google Webmaster Tools. And it, just like uh, having a good crawler is important, uh, you should you should definitely be inside Google Webmaster Tools because in here you can actually add parameters. You have to be careful in here. You don't do anything crazy, but you you can basically go in as a last resort and tell Google to basically trim off a whole number of replicate URLs in the one uh, quick step. I'm not a big fan of this because I've seen sites that have completely different. Uh, if, if you do this, it might limit your choices in the future. You might end up needing this URL to be indexed as it's properly structured. So we've covered a lot of ground today. We've, we've talked about uh, keyword mapping, uh, crawling. One other thing I want to mention, uh, in addition to uh, SEO Moz's crawl tool, I really, really like Streaming Frog. And I also like Zeno's Links, Links Loop. Those are two uh, programs that you can install. They're desktop run applications. SEO Moz is online. SEO Moz has some limitations with the crawl, and it's I think, yeah they're limited to 20,000 pages. That's the only thing. If you've got a client site that's much much higher, if your site is is uh, in the hundred in the uh, hundred thousand range or the five five hundred thousand or a million plus, you want to use uh, Streaming Frog. It's free for up to 500 URLs, I believe, and then you have to pay for uh, beyond that. Uh, Link Sleuth, and I, I apologize, I don't have any uh, screenshots of that. Link Sleuth is a, is a very old tool that was designed to find 404 errors, but it'll go through and call everything. It, it, it's really, really helpful with uh, site maps. And uh, so if, if you have very large sites, I wanted to just throw that out there to you. And um, other than that, I think we're about ready to take questions. I anticipate a lot of questions. Uh, from from this aspect, so I've left a little bit of time, to, a little bit of extra time than normally we would, so I can answer this question. So fire away if you are ready. Cool. Well, we have one from Sarah, and she says we have dozens of blogs on our site. We pull feeds from one area to the site to another. Is this considered duplicate content? So just to make sure, make sure I understand the question correctly, you've got dozens of blogs on the site, and you're pulling feeds. You see, yes. You have to be extremely careful with with uh, blog feeds, especially blog tag pages. It, it, what you want to do is take a look at every page as it's structured in the code. One thing I would strongly suggest, if you don't have installed already, is you want to make sure you have a good plugin installed for WordPress. 
I should ask first of all if that's a WordPress site, but let's assume that it is for now. Uh, you want to use the uh, Yoast SEO plugin. There's also some, a couple other good ones, but in those in the settings within those plugins, you can base, you can set uh, the duplicate pages to not be indexed. But with with the disclaimer, I want to make sure that if you do that, you want to make sure you're not um, that you that you're not doing no index no follow. I would strongly suggest you do no index follow. So the actual duplicate page is getting removed from Google's index, but then it's continuing to fall, follow through every other link on the site. Great. Um, we have an interesting question. It's a little more specific, but I'm sure some people can relate. Um, it's from Kevin, and he asks, I work at a Canadian company, and we are owned by an American company. They have their website, and we have ours. There's a lot of duplicate content between the two as we sell the same products and services. Any ideas on how to handle the content between the two that is very similar in nature? Interesting. And, and, and without getting into the, the specifics of why that, that uh, relationship is set up that way, yes, if, you, if your goal is to be found for organic traffic, uh, you can't do it with two replicates, replicated sites. You just can't do it. I, I would consolidate. I would consider if there is a way, if, and then I, do, I don't know how your business model is set up, but I would consolidate those sites. I would, make, I would turn one site into the other. I would, I would set up 301 redirects for the duplicate pages. Um, I would forward that one of the URLs. If, if one of them was a second, if like say the second site that was set up, maybe the U.S. site was is very new and the Canadian site is very old, I would I would keep the older site, the older domain, which has the, the more established uh, domain authority and, and backlinks. But definitely don't want both of those sites up. Okay, um, so it's very complicated it seems, but it can be remedied. Let's see, and then we have one from Travis as well. It's more about images. So he says, when you're referring to duplicate images, are you specifically saying the image name, extension, and size could be considered duplicate if you have the same picture on different pages with the same qualities of name, extension, and size? Panda does not care if the image itself is the same image, like a group of jars, correct? Well, my, I'm just speaking from experience, okay? From, from my experience, and that particular example was from an editor that consistently ranked number three or four, never number one. And I know you're talking about uh, particular images on your own site. Let's say you've got a, a, a category page describing some uh, particular aspect of your service, your brand, or your product, but then you've got another page using that same image. Absolutely, it is duplicate content. If you look at it, and I would get rid of it. I would not use it in the same place, and I wouldn't uh, rely on just resizing it. And again, I don't want to give the uh, misconception that, hey, it's okay to steal images as long as you resize them and rename them. I, I, I was just experimenting with that particular uh, editor. But, but if you look at it from Google's perspective, again, like if we refer to those images, the, the groups of people, you don't want any of your pages to be the same as another. And that, that clears it up for me. And then I hope that uh, would clear it up for everybody here too. Make sure that every page of your site has, it has the majority of every page of your site has unique, descriptive, distinguishing features. And as long as you approach every site in that same paradigm, you're going to be safe. And that includes images. Okay. Oh, um, and then also Jeffrey asked. This is a little different about external duplicate content. He said, "I've noticed many companies have copied our content from our website." All of our content was original. Does this hurt us? Yeah, that's a great question. It can. It absolutely can hurt you, and you have to take precautions for that. And, and there's a lot of good information online about that. In fact, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, Mahalo.com. In, in February 2011, I actually knew a, a really good SEO that, that used to work there, and I used to work with at FNW Media, uh, that site was taken down, and a lot of the exact match domain sites were actually outranking uh, uh, their site using their content. So that can happen. Um, there's, it, it, I don't have much time to go into it now, but there are certain steps you can take to to make sure that Google is, is notified of that. Um, but but that I, I wouldn't let that go unchecked. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, as far as content development, and I know we get this question a lot with our clients, is just with repurposing content. Um, you say you have you know, a blog post, and then you want to repurpose it for another company or even just another web page. How 
careful and how much do you have to do to be able to not make that duplicate content and what do you need to do if you want to repurpose something? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. And it's something I, I um, ran out of time. I wanted to create a slide about this very topic. I mean, and, and when you say repurpose content, I hope you don't mean, well, uh, I just can't think of anything else to write about. I'm just going to kind of tweak a few words here and there. I hope that's not what you mean. I'm assuming you don't. No. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I, I would hope mean, not, but sometimes that does come up. <laughs> right. Well, one thing that's really important to think about is if, if you're in a particular industry, you're, you're obviously going to be writing about the same stuff. It's hard to write about a thousand different things if, if you're, say, an attorney and your office covers a specific range of services, you're going to write about that all the time, especially if you're actively engaged in creating a ton of new content for your site. So one thing I want to point out is that that keyword map is going to be critical. We talked about keyword mapping earlier on. What you want to do is make sure that when you're repurposing that content that you're, that you're making it unique. And, and you don't have to freak out about uh, Panda just because you're creating a, a, another page of content. In other words, you should write the page naturally on the same topic, but be mindful that the meta title is not duplicate. Okay? If, as long as you're not copying every single meta title and just replicating that page word for word, what I would do is not, I wouldn't think replication. What I would think of is, is write a new page on the same topic but that covers a certain aspect of it. And you should write your meta titles naturally and freely and not be afraid of panda. You should write, and in fact, this is a really good exercise to write content that's semantic. If you're writing a new, a new meta title about the same subject, that's okay. But just be mindful that there is a page that ultimately we want to rank for that phrase. And one thing you can do to help make sure that happens is if you create that new page, that repurposed page, uh, use anchor text internal linking. So inside your page, you can have an anchor text link which is the keyword that you want to run for on your other page. So in other words, if you've got a category page that's targeting a specific service and your new page is you know, with, the, with additional content is covering the same topic, but you want the original page to rank for it, use anchor text to link back to that original page that's on your keyword map and just pay attention to that. That's a great tool to use. Great. Um, I do have a couple more questions. Just one I had from a few people is about PLR content, so private label content where you know you buy something and you can go in and modify it and tweak it depending on your industry. Do you have any thoughts on that? Is that dangerous? Is that just a tricky thing to do is buying content and modifying it since other people can have licenses to it? Again, I, and, and this is a big, big issue in e-commerce, and, and, and even though private label comp, uh, content is is different than um, the scenario I'm going to describe. It's still the same principle. One thing that I've dealt with, I've, I've worked on a number of large e-commerce stores that grab descriptions, product descriptions, right from the supplier. And it's tempting, especially when you've got 10,000 products in your store, it, it's, it's easy to just grab that content and throw it in. Similar to private label content, I, I stay away from it. Stay away from it. Have somebody that writes a unique page. Uh, if, again, and we're talking about, and I, and I don't want to be an alarmist here, but 2011 was, uh, 2011 was obviously groundbreaking with Panda. 2012 wasn't that crazy. But 2013, a lot of people in the industry are, are talking about it. There's, there's, uh, there's going to be another Penguin update, according to Matt Cutts, uh, over the past few days, that could be really groundbreaking. What I'm trying to do is set you up with a good foundation where you're, where you're not having to worry about it. I would say get rid of private label content, write your own content as unique and as fresh and as uh, different as you can. So it's all about quality, right? Quality, uniqueness, and, and relevancy and trust, yep. Which sounds like it's moving in the right direction, but we just have to kind of catch up to the, the speed of the curve, I guess. Yep, absolutely, yep. And then the last question is just um, the two tools you mentioned at the end, I believe one was Screaming Frog, and then what was the other one? Screaming Frog, and then there's a tool called Xenu's Link Sleuth. If you just go to Google and search Link Sleuth, it's, it's this really funky site. It's got this picture of this alien. It's really dated, but <laughs> it's free, and it's, uh, and it's great for finding 404 errors. It, what it does is it gives you the ability to it crawls your site very fast, and uh, the last crawl I did a few days ago, it pulled up 75,000 pages, and I was able to export that in a CSV file. Okay. 
and it's, 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 a, it's a good way to dump a bunch of URLs in a CSV file, and then you can use Excel, just sorting features, to, to uh, eyeball through the, uh, uh, through the duplicate URLs. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't present it like the way SEO Moz does. I like SEO Moz because it, 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 it lays out everything for you. It says, okay, these columns are duplicate. These, call, these titles are duplicate. This content is duplicate. It, it, it makes it a lot quicker. Depends on your goals, though. I, I find that I have to use Link Sloop or Screaming Frog if the site is too large. I was crawling a site um, a couple weeks ago that was uh, well over a million pages, and you just can't get a really, really good read from the SEO Moz tool. Okay, great. So Screaming Frog and Link Sloop. Yeah, S L E S L E U T H. Great. I think that's all the time we have today. I do have more questions. Um, I see them there. We will get them answered. We'll either email you or we'll post them on our website and contact you when that's up. This it has been recorded, so we're going to post it up latest by Monday, so you'll all get a link. Um, I want to thank you, Art, for joining us and sharing all of your information. I know that you could probably talk a lot more, but that was great, so thank you. Sure thing. And then please mark your calendar for our next webinar. It's April 11th, where Bill Flitter of Deliver It will be speaking on the topic, How to Leverage Earned and Owned Media to Create Effective made Paid Media Programs. Should be pretty interesting. Registration is already open for that. So you can just go over to our website, verticalmeasures.com forward slash webinars, and you can register there. Again, I'm Quinn, and from all of us at Vertical Measures, thank you for your time, and have a great day. Bye.